Setting up. It says it's live. It says it's live. Well, what's going on, Facebook? Oh, wait, hold on. Knock I'm sorry, I forgot. Let me just uh... <laughs> Uh, you know, close now enough, I'm ready. <laughs> close, close enough. Yeah. Uh, salute to the uh, to the goat. For those of you who watch American sports ball, um, <laughs> there's an old man playing a sport today who means something. he is old. <laughs> he is yeah, hardcore old for American football standards. Yeah. And I mean, he, uh, 43, he's just getting to the point of just being old. <laughs> At now, what? Tammy, yeah. <laughs> oh, I forgot Tammy's on the call. I can't say that. I wasn't. I wasn't oh, gonna, that was your out loud that. voice. I, I know. I'm not touching that. Welcome, everyone. Uh, we have a rare honor in that the, the, the resident adult <laughs> of Chiron training is here. Fresh from whichever elven woodland environment she is in at the moment. That's become literal, though. <laughs> <laughs> no, like a, the middle of nowhere, uh, Middle Earth. Um, actual Misty Mountains. <laughs> actual Misty Mountains. Actual, yes. Uh, yeah, so Tammy, welcome. Uh, yeah, cool to be here with you guys. I typically can't, so. Uh, she's usually too busy being an actual full adult human while the rest of us. <laughs> Sit around I, and talk about weird shit. <laughs> Which is about correct, actually. That's a fairly accurate assessment. <laughs> I mean, if it if it looks like a duck and quacks like a duck. Uh, but we're what we're talking about today is uh, figure. Eric Eric showed us. Eric Shaver said you're live, and then Lindemann said you're alive. <laughs> yes, we're, we are both That's, of those things. <laughs> dead people don't bleed, as far as I know. Um, but, but yeah, so we're talking about who inspired us, you know, a little bit lighter from combat sports or watching TV or whatever else to get into martial arts. I'll start with our, our rarest individual. Tammy, what inspired you? Um, so the original childhood interest, which is since Paul's already thrown the old joke out there uh i can just put this out there with no shame um was the original kung fu series with david carradine nice i was nope. i was a child not a five-year-old child but it was a a child when that was running um and so, so yeah did, that, you, did you thoroughly enjoy him and kill bill then as like a result because it was totally a takeoff of that character Oh yeah, yeah. Kill Bill was fantastic. Uh, the the whole thing was fantastic. But seeing him in that role was pretty wonderful. Yeah, and you know, and of course, this is back in the you search things in your community via the yellow pages, um, and and so you know, I'm looking for like I want to do this thing, right? And, you know, couldn't find anything, and of course, you know, it was. I think the one place that I actually managed to call when they heard that it was a little girl on the other end of the phone line quickly <laughs> steered the conversation into a, you know, no thank you response. Little, little did they know. <laughs> that, yeah, wow. They could have they got in on that one early, but they, <laughs> they failed. Um, wow. Paul, what about you? Who is the original inspiration? Um, I mean, I, I'm definitely the karate kid sitting in the, you know, the middle of the Danielson era and full on Miyagi as real life Yoda, right? Mm. Um, real life. Um, the, the actual, like the real, real, like no bullshit impetus. I, I wrestled poorly in high school mm. and when I hit college, um, they had, you know, some martial art, like throw away a bunch of fitness classes. Walking was a class. Um, just to throw away one credit, you know, fitness, yeah. whatever, move, get, get fat college kids to move. Mm -hmm. Um, and they had five or six martial arts and I had watched <laughs> on grainy, I think pirated UFC one. Mm -hmm. And I remember a tall, skinny guy beating the crap out of all these people. And I was like, well, I'm a tall, skinny guy back then. Um, 
And one of the things on there was jujitsu. I was like, why do I know that name, jujitsu? Oh, that's what that skinny guy did. I'm, I'm skinny. I should probably, and it says grappling. I should probably go do that. I thought it was what he did. Turns out it wasn't exactly what he did, but who cares? If I And my joke is I haven't missed a class since. So technically that's the most direct connection. Hmm. Malcolm. Dolomite. No. <laughs> oh, wow. Right been, of the nose, huh? <laughs> that would have been wow. too. That would have been too. Yeah, that, that's, that's a little before my time. Um, so there were a bunch. It's hard to kind of extricate them. Uh, the Hollywood one that stuck out in my mind the most was Roadhouse. It was Wade Garrett. And to some degree, uh, what's that other guy's name? Dalton or whatever. No, it was, it was Wade Garrett. It was Wade because Wade that, Garrett was so cool. That was, secondary character. Yeah, that minor, whatever. He was like doing Tai Chi with his shirt off. I don't know why his shirt had to be off. Uh, it doesn't make Because sense. of Tammy, not for you and me. Why does Thor always lose his shirt in every movie for no reason? <laughs> yes, the shirt being off was absolutely essential to the entire <laughs> plot line of the film. Right. Precisely. Yeah, no, that makes perfect sense. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I thought he was very, very cool. And I kind of liked that he looked <laughs> like he was a boxer. And I liked that he kind of had a limp. So he already had like a a, a kind of a, a problem. And just something about just Wade Garrett's cool. Like the fact that he was like half macking his friend's girl. But his friend was so cool with it that it didn't matter. And I was like. You know, I feel like they should have got him hurt. <laughs> Something should have happened. And Dalton was just like, yeah. And, you know, it actually even made it cooler a little bit that he died because, like, he died. It took, like, five guys in a concerted effort to kill him. <laughs> he didn't have plot armor. I don't know. He was just the coolest guy. I, and it I, also, I'll give you that. He was pretty cool. <laughs> it, Roadhouse has helped. It also Roadhouse. helped that he could do the cool thing, like, before man buns were a thing. He did, he did the little mini man. <laughs> but it's a dental, too. Almost like it was just, this is annoying. I'm going to get out of my way. It wasn't like trying to be pretty. <laughs> it was yeah. just this out of utter necessity. I, Roadhouse I, 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 has two of my favorite. Roadhouse has two of my favorite quotes that I actually use in class. Mm. Uh, number one, <laughs> if you want to, pain don't hurt. <laughs> number two, um, be nice until it's time not to be nice. Not to be nice, yes. <laughs> right? Yes, that one's huge. It's 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 utterly appropriate for all contexts. I feel like it's the best life advice you've ever gotten. It's weird too because there was some low key wisdom in that movie. There was a lot of bullshit, but there was some low key wisdom. When he was like, "It's a combination of nouns designed to elicit a response," I was like, "Hmm, wait a minute. You mean words are just words? They don't actually have to mean anything?" Holy shit! That was it was a weird thought at the time, anyway. Well, there's another there's another great Thor reference there in uh Infinity War. <laughs> like that's a made up word. Thor goes, all words are made up. <laughs> I I love that line. Although Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles played a role. I'm also I'm trying to remember if there was stuff when I, from when I was way younger. Because the no bullshit answer for me, Paul, was was my dad. I talk about my dad way too much, but it was like little five year old Malcolm had the the fork punch combination it was three jabs and a cross and he would sit there and and he had these really big fucking heavy hands and so hitting his hands hurt and so you had to like gear up to hit him and so that was like the original inspiration really but in hollywood i would actually go back to my dad with like hollywood stuff and i'd be like dad is this real i remember the first time i found out which is very weird if you think about it but the first time i found out that handguns were really really loud like when you were right next to him was because I'd watched some movie. I think it was like uh, Enemy of the State. I, might, I don't know. I might have been like 10 or 11. And I watched the movie and I come back to dad and I'm like, yeah, there's no way they're that loud. And he's like, son, you've heard <laughs> these from a distance. Like you've heard them from outside. You've never heard them from right here. Trust me when I tell you they're loudest. So I'm, of course, me being super smart, I decide that I know what I'm talking about and he doesn't. Because, you know, that's how that yeah. goes. And somebody in Dorchester obliged you? <laughs> and, no, you, you, uh, that too. <laughs> yeah, that, mm. 
but that the just discovering how often like stuff in movies was bullshit it was a very good thing for me to learn very early because I was learning from people who I knew had been in a bunch of violent interactions so I'd come back with like Jet Li movies and I'd be like hey does this make sense and they'd be like I would have picked his little ass up and choked hit slammed him so hard he would have never got back up again and you know initially you're like oh they can't really do that then you're like wait Jet Li's like 5'4 like, <laughs> 25 pounds, 30, yeah. 40. Physics, physics are a you thing. Know, <laughs> no, nobody gets out of holes by digging down. Both of you. <laughs> I didn't make any reference to you besides there. Wow, <laughs> you had the, I mean, I don't know why. <laughs> how did that, how did you take <laughs> that lead and paste it onto to you? To, to, you to be clear, were, you were that's why I both about, scared I, you. <laughs> I picked him up and slammed his head in the ground. You know, he's only 5'4 and 125 pounds. I'm like, I didn't say that about standing me. right here. I didn't say that about me. I was talking about the 280 pounds, six foot four ex convict that I was having the conversation with who said that he ah. was. I wasn't talking about me. Context, my friend. Context I, is everything. You left that little know. piece off. Yeah, I did. That was a minor, a minor addition that I should have included. Uh, but of course, Eric, that's Eric on Facebook said Bruce Lee, and I would imagine Bruce Lee was probably a big jump off for a lot of people. Yeah, yeah. of course. I mean, he was. Yep. The, he was the guy who made it all look cool. Who cares if he never actually fought anybody? That shit don't matter. We're not going to talk about that. We're just oh, gonna yeah, I know, right? Gonna... Here go the keyboard oh, warriors. I must Ooh. defend his honor. Not I. All right, look. All I said was we don't have a whole bunch of recorded fights. That's all I said. I'm not touching that. You know what's so funny about it, though? Like, who cares if he did or he didn't? He popularized martial arts in a way that made it accessible for a wider range of people. So I don't care if he couldn't do any of that shit and it was all fake and stunt doubles. And once, although I have to admit, I was disappointed when I found out that the the Enter the Dragon scene where he does the cartwheels and then the flip wasn't him. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Wasn't him. That kind of kind of blew my high a little bit. I was like, really? That sucks. Not a gymnast. <laughs> I, uh, but still, like, I used to think that martial arts and gymnast, gymnastics were so closely connected. Like, if you couldn't do a backflip, you weren't a karate person. That's what I thought. I, I get, I'll throw two things out there real quick because we're, we're at 6 o'clock. But when I was young, WWE – sorry, WWF because I was young. Um, and just beating the bag out of my brother and our friends in the living room. I actually don't know how we survived because we body slammed each other. I you know the tombstone bile driver. I did that to my brother once in the living room. How his neck didn't break, I have no idea. <laughs> you um, did it wrong. Apparently, I did it wrong, right? I don't know. It depends on who you ask. The um, jump forward to my teen years, and mostly because he was Italian, uh, my family were big fans of Seagal. Hold on, hold on, hold on. You know Tammy is here, right? So, like, yep. you're talking about your history – just so you know, like you're gonna end up in a file. So <laughs> I just want you to know you're building on the file. I, I know there's a Paul file somewhere in Tammy's house. I know there's some. I'm sure, there's a, well, I wonder what the Malcolm file is. That's what I'm really curious. The Malcolm. About. The Malcolm. I'm the man of mystery. The Malcolm file has nothing. <laughs> there's nothing in there. He had a dad. Um, <laughs> exactly. He had a dad at some point, and his dad like, had heavy hands or some shit. I don't know. Peak Seagal, late '80s. Peak Seagal um was was also like that was definitely up there as well might may or may not have influenced my growing of a ponytail at the end of high school <laughs> i need pictures i need pictures come they were on burned by a torch sorry malcolm <laughs> <laughs> i you know what is funny though michael j white played a little bit of a role because yeah. i remember universal soldier the return or the the, the, the combine or i don't know whatever it was and Michael J. White kicked somebody and just held his leg there. And it was supposed to be so mechanical. I was really impressed. I was like, okay, Michael J. White, salute. Lindemann wrote, uh, whoa, daring talk about St. Lee. <laughs> the first Kung Fu movies that influenced him weren't Bruce Lee. Doesn't know who they were. Must have been uh, many similar movies from the Hong Kong. Yeah, there's, there's, it goes yeah. deep into the Hong Kong. 
Yeah. Kung Fu type stuff. And early Seagal is also on his list. And he had a ponytail too. Yes. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Weiber still might have a ponytail. Shout out to you, Weiber. Um, <laughs> Tammy, were there any, because we're going to completely pigeonhole you, were there any female inspirations early on the martial arts side? When she says Cynthia Rothrock, I'm going to fall off my chair. I mean, Cynthia Rothrock kind of did it. Um, <laughs> really? I, you know, I... I have to say, probably not. I mean, other than like, um, you know, the the Wonder Woman cartoons and you know stuff like that, right? Um, I were you watching the original Wonder Woman series with uh, Lin Linda Carter? Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so yeah. absolutely. Yes. Um, kind of forgot about that, but yeah. So that, I mean, those would probably be influences, and I think. Um, you know, just in in all fairness and talking about those like lifelong influences, it, it, when there weren't really accessible opportunities to, you know, as a kid, like, you know, we're sort of, you know, we're super ADD as kids, as far as our interests go. And not a lot of opportunities to like try and pursue it. I was like, okay, I'll pay attention to something else for a while. <laughs> um, just cause they're, yeah, they're just, there wasn't much, at all in the way of martial arts out where I lived. And like I said, you know, the, the whole, oh, it's a girl on the other end of the phone conversation was, you know, definitely a thing. You know, we still get that. Do you guys have girls in your classes? <laughs> like, <laughs> still, we still get that today. Rhonda Rousey. Hello, cat. Which cat is that? That's Tink. Oh, that's Tink. It's, she's, she's the only feline in my household these days. Aww. Hello, Tink. Uh, yeah, Tink has, Tink has her own Instagram now, Malcolm. She does. <laughs> no, she, she, does it. she absolutely she does. does. Tink underscore tails, as in tails. Tails, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna have to come back. They're oh, those jokes are too easy. I can't. All right, no. It's six, gonna, it's six oh five. We gotta switch gears. <laughs> yeah, we gotta, we gotta go. switch gears. Sorry, uh, Facebook right. Live. Uh, all right, Facebook Live, it's been a pleasure. We're going to jump over to the Zoom. If you want to hear more of these ridiculous conversations, and occasionally Tammy, the elven queen, will show up and share her wisdom with us, or mostly just stare at us weirdly as we talk, uh, feel free to stop on by the Zoom calls for Tier 2 patrons and up. Peace. Y'all be safe. Or don't. I don't know. It's your life. <laughs> Later, all. See you guys on Zoom in five seconds. Chiron. <laughs>